new stuff that you can do for solo training. Uh, I'm going to show you how to cut with the blade properly. A lot of you may have done these angles with me just when we're doing the stick tapping stuff. When we're talking about blade, we want to get a little more serious with this. I'm going to go through basically the first 10 angles and I'll show you some other additional angles. In the standard stick one, we use the 12 angles. This one, we don't need really the 12 because uh, the wittiks are added in a different way here with play. This first angle, what I want to do here is come in and actually I'm going to use it right here. Of course. Okay. So I'm coming in from my same side. Again, I'm not reaching back here to telegraph. When I'm coming in, if I pull my blade, I'm in tight, okay? Not a lot of space. As I come from here, there's a couple. The first angle is coming down through the collarbone. It's an angle. It can go through here. It can go through there, okay? If you get the eyeball across the face, very good. If I get through the, you know, the carotid arteries and so on, very good. If I collapse the collarbone, that arm doesn't work, okay? So let's look at this first cut, okay? Depending on the type of cut, the angle is here, but there's a series of types of cuts that we'll talk through. I can lock tick it, okay? Or break the wrist as I'm coming through. If I'm doing that type of cut along that, I'm looking to go in the first section of his face here, okay? See where that is from his nose forward. And I'm carving that. So I'm going for the eye nose with that. I'm going to slice the throat, okay? That type of stuff, if I'm doing that. The other way I can apply this, if we're just talking two basic ones, is using this as an impact weapon too. So I could be punching and cutting that collarbone. I could be punching. I could be punching to the jaw and dragging through where we're using more of a barrel cut. So if you see that, instead of cutting through, or slicing through, okay, which is a casting cut, all right? The, this cut is really heavy. The elbow stays in and you're really driving your body weight into that. This is that same Fuchs out position. So in one, first angle, okay? I don't bring it back way out. I keep everything in front of me. So I've gone through, boom, here, okay? And as you gotta go, if you're practicing, practice separating the person at the same time when you're doing this. Okay, this will help you with learning how to check. Okay, two, I'm coming in, same idea. I can cut across here and cut across here. It depends on the weapon length, what I'm doing. For instance, if I'm coming and he has a sword or machete, my best line, line of angles are to come. This line right here from the collarbone through the hip is very hard to defend against for beginning fighters. Okay, and we'll get into that as we get into machetes, we get into everything. Okay, so we're back here. First one, one. Second one, two. All right? So now I'm going to come in and just work the first two angles. Basically, yeah. And when I'm doing it, I want you to lay your knuckles. Keep going with that. So I want you to really, you can use that punya as a part. Boom, the heel of, this, of your weapon, blunt force portion. Okay? And you can drive that in. Your knuckles will be nice and solid. Boom, drive it through. Use your hips. Use your body. See how he's turning, okay? If your body's not turning with it, watch my elbow. I can hold this elbow and still get that power. I don't need to go way out here and do this, okay? If you go way out here and do this, I'm gonna be hitting on you way too fast, okay? The first two angles. When you're practicing, put that weight in. Now, break the collarbone. Slice, okay? Back out and use the slicing one, so this, I'm aiming to do the collarbone, okay? If I want to keep it lighter, I can use the slice. So slice this way okay. or turn across the angle as I cut and chip it, okay, with your lock tip. So I can slice it on that angle or I can chip it, okay? Uh -huh. Find those. So change your, your distances on where you cut. And move in and out. So you've gone for the, through the eye, break the collarbone. Yeah, so you're using those. Very good. Good. Next one right here, okay? He's coming in. Now, on this area right here, I'm looking at him from sort of the elbow region. So if I could cut the tendons here, if I could cut the tendons on the back, if 
he's like cutting towards me right here, and I happen to move away, then it opens up the floating ribs, the bottom of the rib. He can essentially walk around and everything all the way around this point, my solar plexus to, you know, everything. So on these ones, again, they can have things. They're coming in on this angle, but don't always think that I'm saying that this is coming in from here, that it's flat, okay? It could be coming up on you. So this one's sort of like through the elbow and an upward X motion, okay? So it can go anywhere from flat sort of angle, but it's coming from that low outside by the hip angle in this way at you, okay? Same idea, you can use that punch, boom, and drive through it. So we've got the first four corners, all right, are one, again, two. We're using this, what we call, we can cut through, depending on cut, but one of the things I like to do is have it bounce off, so we call it with tick. Anything that's bouncing is basically with tick, okay? So you're working this, pull it through, pull it through, okay? Don't swing back, back into your side line, all right? If I'm in a saber grip here, I still want that flashlight. Look, keep that tip pointing like a flashlight at them, okay? From here, I'm coming in, boom, back in. I got those four corners. Three, four, okay? So if you're attacking towards me, right? Four, boom, three, two, we're good. That's it. Three. Three. Now this isn't wrong. This is standard. Most people do it in the X patterns. A downward, then an upward X, okay? But what I like to do is train you to sort of be able to bounce off. So instead of the upper decks, I like to use the four corners. One, two, three, four. So you actually work in a double siding rather than just always practicing following through, okay? So you got one, two, bounce back to your body. Three, good, four, good. Try it again, try to keep your, hold on to your elbow. Hold on to your elbow, okay? Right. So as you're going through there, good. Two, keep that elbow in, okay? So again, he did the X pad, I don't care. Do it as long as you understand their angles of attack. Okay. And they'll change around. So when we're defending, it doesn't matter what order he does, it matters that it's coming in on those angles, okay? That slight upward elbow height angle, okay? Next one we're doing is the stabs, all right? So I'm gonna have him here. First one again, try to keep your elbows in front of you guys, okay? Try to keep your fight, your fight positions right here, all right? So as I'm going in, if I'm starting, I want to be in the saber grip, long range. If we're in close and I'm activating my live hand, I'm gonna be in like more boxer stance, okay? All right, so this one here, you'll see these commonly, okay? This first one is that stab, right? And they're not going here. This is what people do as a stab. This is a fencing stab, all right? This will stab somebody, but depending on what they're wearing on stuff like this and how much uh, you go and extend yourself, it doesn't really work so great. You wanna really put the power into somebody. You need to keep that wrist locked, okay? Slight, like locked right here. I want this here. And when I'm doing it, I'm gonna turn that in an angle. So I'm bringing this to my hip right here, okay? And this is where you'll see this grab around the neck and I'm like, dig and pull up, so it's a scoop, okay? When I get in there, it's going up into the, underneath the rib cage. And as I come out, you're gonna twist and pull back out to the, to the high rib here, okay? So from here, I don't wanna go way back out here. The next one comes in to the side of the neck, twist, okay? And I'm gonna push the face off here, okay? Same thing when I come back here, I'm gonna come back on this side, in the neck, I'm gonna twist, and I'm gonna pull it back out, okay? I can pull it back out or pull it back to the hip. Your choice on what your follow-up's gonna be, okay? Just want you to get those basics. So again, try those first four corners. Okay. One, two, bounce off. Three, four. Also, bear. Good, very nice. Now the stab. Okay, so see this? Yeah. See how this wrist is? You, if you were to go and push, uh -huh. you can very easily lose that blade. Or if you go here and I move down or something like this. Yeah. So I want it like this. Okay. okay? So when you're going in, scoop like you're 
Here for some ice cream. Ah. Yeah, and you're ripping up inside. Okay. Now push my chest away. Okay. The only thing you want there is you want to twist. To click too easy. Okay. Create open, cut it, cut away some of the vacuum potential, uh -huh. and you pull it right up. Ah. Okay. That makes sense, right? So let's work that first one. So go for that stab now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Up. Bang. Good. So it's it's in. Okay. When I'm going it's here, boom. Okay. Once I get in. Um, it's almost like a double pull in. Yeah, very kung fu sort of thing. Okay. So you're gonna go in uh, and then push me away. There it is. Okay, and he gets into that bow and arrow position. So he's straightened me up. All right. So he's got that first one. Push, push. Good. Now the next one. He's got that high angle. Okay. This could come in a couple ways. It could come straight, or it could fish hook. Okay. okay? And there's a lot. It could slash. It's an angle. Okay. You don't know which way the blade's gonna go. You have to understand the angle of attack, okay? Mm -hmm. So this one on the stab is going in, but whether I hit here, I could just do it as a quick poke, mm -hmm. poke, poke, quick, okay? But if I want the, to really finish, I'm gonna go in, okay? okay? I'm gonna twist, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna pull it back, 